Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the second lecture in Chapter 8, where we're going to discuss motion in one dimension under the action of a conservative force and conservation of momentum. Okay, motion in one dimension under the action of a conservative force. The variable we're going to use to indicate one dimension will be s, and we've discussed that earlier when we were talking about uh, Newton's second law. So the equations are m, second derivative of s, with respect to t twice, equals minus the gradient of the potential energy function, which is just a function of s, and we have initial conditions and initial initial position and initial velocities at a given time. So we know that the particle moves in such a way in this case so that energy is conserved. So wherever we're at, that is wherever value of s and s dot we have, this value of kinetic plus potential at that point is a constant. We're going to call that constant E. We refer to that as the energy. It's a total energy, but uh, we'll just call it the energy when we understand that it's kinetic plus potential. All right, now, a trajectory moves along a constant energy curve. So what we could do for this, do, we could solve for s dot. It's just a quadratic equation. And then we have a plus or minus sign whenever we take a square root, and we need to carefully consider which sign to take, and we'll learn about that a little later. But what you see from this is we could integrate this from the initial position to some arbitrary position, s of t, which is the solution, and the t integral is here. So if we could do this integral on the left-hand side, the integral on the right-hand side is trivial. And then somehow, with the expression we got, if we could solve for s of t alone, then we could manipulate this, invert it in some way, and get the solution. So this is a solution of the equation where we've reduced it to an integral. Now, can we do the integral for any value of potential energy? No, you know we can't do that. If we have fifth order polynomial, sixth order, for example, we can't do these integrals in closed form. Also, we need to make sure e minus v of s is always positive, or the square root wouldn't make any sense. So there's a lot of issues involved with giving meaning to, the, to 8, 6, and being able to, from that, integrate the equations to extract from it the solution s of t. Now, many years ago, this used to be referred to as reduction to quadratures. Quadrature is another name for integrals. So th this is going to come back. We're going to, uh, this is not the last we've seen of this. We're going to look, look at this expression in more detail later. Okay, conservation momentum. Conservation means conditions under which the momentum is conserved. It does not change in time, in other words. So remember Newton's second law for momentum. The force is dp dt. We're, we're looking for situations where p does not change in time. p is a vector. Energy is a scalar. p is a vector. Well, that would be the case if f were zero, that is the total forces, or the net force, as it's often said, acting on the particle of mass m is zero. 
In this case, we would have dp dt equals 0. In other words, p is constant in time. p is, is a vector, so its magnitude and direction are constant in time. And this is momentum conservation, another example of Newton's or a rewording of Newton's first law discovered first by Galileo. In any case, this is a good place to stop now. And in the next lecture, we're going to look at two examples that we've done already and use energy conservation in order to solve them in some sense. So that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.